There is a fifth dimension, beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is a middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is a dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Hey guys, Alf here, back with another episode of Analyzing the Twilight Zone. Uh, we're on Season 1, Episode 9, Perchance to Dream. And this episode is directed by Robert Flory and written by Charles Beaumont. And it's based on his story of the same name, published in November 1958 issue of Playboy Magazine. Ooh la la. So, uh, Charles Beaumont is a prominent writer for the Twilight Zone. He died very young. I, I'm... I don't remember if it was during the Twilight Zone or right after, but he died pretty young. But um, some of his episodes are the bigger ones. Like the big three writers for the Twilight Zone is Rod Serling, Charles Beaumont, and Richard Matheson, which we haven't re reached any Richard Matheson stories yet, but we will. Um, but yeah, Charles Beaumont did some of my favorites. But um, I have to say with this one, not my favorite. Uh, it, it's actually not that great, but I think what makes it not that great is that it's a something that's been done to death by now. So going back and watching it, you're kind of like, eh, it's just a generic story. But probably at the time, it was something that was very different and new and interesting. But uh, yeah, let me let me break down the story for you. This guy named Edward Hall, he's played by Richard Conte, who uh, I think he's been in a couple episodes. But um, yeah, he has a heart condition and he goes to see a psychiatrist because... He's having troubles He because he hasn't slept in like four days <clears throat> because he thinks if he goes to sleep, he's going to die. Now, the psychiatrist is named Dr. Elliot Rathman, played by John Larch. He's uh, who's also an actor who's been in a bunch of Twilight Zones. He's in the one uh, It's a Good Life with the little kid who has powers and you better think better think happy thoughts, which is a, probably the, one of the most popular episodes of the Twilight Zone. He, he played the dad in that one. Um, but yeah, psychiatrist trying to figure out why he's not sleeping. And this guy goes into a story about how when he was a kid, his he looks at a painting of a boat in the psychiatrist's office. And he talks about like when he was a kid, his mom would say, hey, you can make that boat move if you stare at it. Right. So he kept, so he would keep staring at it and staring at it, trying to get it to move for like hours. And eventually it did move. You know, a psychiatrist is like, that's normal. That's an optical illusion. You stare at things long enough, you know, you, you'll start seeing things in it. And, uh, but he's like, yeah, but then I couldn't stop seeing it moving. Like I would look away and look back and it would still be moving. There was any time I would look at the picture it would be moving. I couldn't stop it. <clears throat> then he goes into other stories like that in his life. Like basically anything he focused on, he would, you know, it would bring fear to him and he couldn't escape it. He would obsess over it. So he starts telling him that he's been having these recurring dreams. And in these recurring dreams, he's at a carnival and he meets a woman well, the, uh, one of the attractions at the carnival is uh, a dancer named Maya, the cat girl. Ooh. So she's like this very uh, sexualized woman. She does a little sexy dance, at least sexy for 1959, right? She's pretty fully clothed for these today's standards. But um, yeah, eventually she comes to him and starts talking to him and she wants to have fun with him. And she's, you know, he's like, uh, he has this heart condition, so he doesn't want to deal with it. But it goes back and forth with him waking up, telling the story and then, you know, saying that these are multiple dreams. They keep picking up right where they left off. And um, yeah, at some point, yeah, I'll probably cut this short because it, it's not a very long story. So at some point they go to a fun house or a haunted house, you know, the carnival attractions that are scary. And uh, she takes him there, she start, she like kisses him or something, but then all these little, you know, all the little scary things from these pop up, which is just really stupid. If you ever been to a haunted house, you know what it's like in these amusement parks, that they're really fucking cheesy. And you're just, it's just like little statues that pop up and, you know, you hear a weird, no, ah, crazy noise to scare you, but they're not really scary. 
But to him, with the heart condition, it is. And he's like, oh, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to kill me. You know, and he runs out. Uh, you know, he wakes up, goes back to sleep, has another dream and picks up right where it left off. And he's in front of a roller coaster now. And uh, she's telling him, hey, let's get on the roller coaster. And he's like, I know I don't want to do it. But for some reason, I can't help myself but do it. So he buys a ticket. They go on the roller coaster. They, the roller coaster takes off. He's going up and down. He's getting scared. He's trying to, like, close his eyes and hold on to the chair. The chick is, like, cracking up, having so much so much fun looking at him in fear. And uh, he said, and then he wakes up, and he said that was the last dream he had. So he's, like, he's been up for four days, scared to go to sleep. Because if he goes to sleep, he's going to pick up right where it left off. And he's going to be in that roller coaster, and he's going to die. He's going to have a heart attack. So he's, like... Uh, he's like, I'm basically screwed. You know, I, I if I stay awake much longer, I'm going to have a heart attack. If I go to sleep, I'm going to have a heart attack. Um, then, uh, he, you know, the doctor doesn't know what to tell him. He's like, oh, I think that, you know, he's thinking that this guy's a little crazy. He's over, over exaggerated. He has nothing to fear. He's like, you know, you should probably just take get some sleep. But the, the guy says he's leaving, and he's like, where are you going? You, you should relax. And the guy's like, you know, I'm just going to go for a walk. Thanks for listening to me, Doc. I guess I just needed someone to tell this to. So he walks out, and he sees the receptionist there. And the receptionist looks just like the girl in his dream, Maya. And he's like, oh, oh shit. And, you know, he screams, Maya. And he comes running back in. And he's like, oh, I saw, just saw her. And he's like, my receptionist? Her name's not Maya. So, you know, he kind of freaks out, and he just runs and fucking jumps out the window smashes through the glass <laughs> jumps out the window and falls to his death basically but then it picks up right back to the psychiatrist looking there and he calls his receptionist in and he's like yeah i'm gonna need you to call the ambulance and it's not because he jumped out the window what really happened was the second the dude came into the office he laid down closed his eyes and passed out and he was sleeping the whole time so the dream itself was him explaining his dreams and the whole thing was a dream so he basically had a heart attack in his sleep having a dream that he was explaining to us at the, that psychiatrist his dreams that's that's about it yeah um yeah like i said it's not a very complex story it's not deep at all there's not much to it uh really the only thing i could say is maybe it's a message of not to obsess over certain things like obsess over your fears because that's what's gonna cause you to experience that fear and possibly injure yourself or die uh, let me give you some trivia. The director filming this show for quality, which is, it is a very well written episode. I mean, not well written. It, it is a very well done episode. Uh, the filming was very good. Was done really well. Um, it It's saying here, it might have been the most expensive MGM feature at the time. And, um, uh, and they have a quote from uh, Charles Beaumont talking about it, where he basically says he brought the director of the story and he was surprised at how the director presented his story by pulling out like weird symbols and shadings and uh things that you know charles Beaumont never even thought about when he was writing a story and the director just basically brought his story to life with all these you know symbolism and shit and uh impression impressionistic uh landscapes and sets you know that's kind of like the old german impressionistic horror movies like uh caligari or uh metropolis yeah uh the main actor richard conte does a good job expressing the fear his his dialogue is written really well i mean everything about the story is good it's written well it's shot well it's just the story itself is kind of generic and not very deep but like i said before it probably was at the time something new but you know we've seen it done so many times if you think about it it's kind of like Nightmare on Elm Street is probably inspired by this, as you can see that, you know, people, the whole concept of Nightmare on Elm Street is that teenagers don't want to go to sleep, and they try to stay up as long as they can, and then there's there's always that fear that you can't stay awake, you know, humans need to sleep, it, it's, it's part of our biology, you can't just go without sleep, so if, if you go to sleep, and there's something that's going to kill you in your sleep, there's no escape from that, you know, and it, it's, it's a serious, scary idea, right? Um, the girl's name in the dream, Maya, is a Hindu word, meaning the supernatural power wielded by gods and demons to produce illusions. So, I don't know if that was done on purpose, but possibly. Richard Conte, who played a, a guy with a heart condition that would potentially lead to a, a heart attack, is kind of coincidental because in real life, Richard Conte died of a heart attack at, at 65. <laughs>
Although, it's not really that much of a coincidence because lots of people die of heart attacks. So, so um, I don't think I have much else to say about this. Sorry if it's uh, this one didn't have much to it. I mean, not every episode is going to be profound and deep and have much to talk about it. It's very much a simple story and a simple fear of sleep is, is the premise. So there's not really much else to say about it. The next episode I'll be doing well, is called Judgment Night, episode 10. So... Uh, Stay tuned for that. I'll probably put that out next week. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.